There's a word in Korean, inyon. It means providence or fate. Do you believe in that? That's just something Koreans say to seduce someone. What a good story this is. Childhood sweethearts who reconnect 20 years later and realize they were meant for each other. In the story, I would be the evil white American husband standing in the way of destiny. Shut up. He was just this kid in my head for such a long time. I think I just missed him. Did he miss you? Hands on! So the second film that we're going to review is Past Lives, which was also part of the Edinburgh International Film Festival and is currently out in cinemas across the UK and lots of places. So Jim, tell us a little bit about Past Lives. You saw it in Sundance, correct? I, no, I didn't actually. I, oh. I, I, I was at that. Um, well, I, I say at, I was virtually at that Sundance. But no, I actually saw it at a press screen down here about six oh, right. weeks ago, maybe something like that. Um, so, but yeah, and it went, you know, it went around the festival circuit. I think it was at Berlin as well. I think that was kind of like it was when a lot of people I know saw it. Um, so the film follows, so it follows three people, but two in particular. Um, so the two people it mainly follows are Na Young and Hei Sung, who were uh, classmates in Seoul uh, when they were children. And basically, um, Hei Sung stays in Korea. Uh, and Na Young, who then takes on the name uh, Nora, uh, once she moves to America, she moves, uh, sorry, not America, they move to Toronto um, with their family, and later in life she moves to New York City, and she's a playwright and is trying to make her uh, kind of dream come true there. A uh, supporting character here, uh, played by John Magaro, is her husband in New York, who she, she meets. And basically the film is kind of split across three different, kind of periods right we've got a brief period around when uh the two uh so nora and Sung are 12 years old and they are still classmates and they're in korea together there's another period about i think it's about 12 years after that i might get some of my timelines wrong here but basically the whole film takes over a span of about 25 years something like that um so there's another strand 12 years after that where um she reconnects with him um and he they they start trying to do a sort of like a distance relationship but it doesn't it doesn't really work out and as that ends uh nora meets her her husband and we then follow it and this is where kind of i think to my memory the bulk of the film really takes takes place or at least a lot of kind of like where you know our actual um conflicts and drama pay off uh, 12 years again after that when she's in New York and Hei Sung has come to visit her, right? Now, the, the the husband, Arthur, he thinks that he has come to see her and it's not an incidental trip. Uh, she's kind of laboring under the impression that that's not the case. And basically, it's it deals with a lot of things. I've seen a lot of people describe this as a romantic film. Um, I don't think I agree with that. Um it's a very emotional film. It's a very involving film. Uh, I think the two central performances are really great. Um, it's another film that kind of deals with the, the immigrant experience to a certain extent, but what I feel it was about more and what I got out of it is kind of this, how do you get closure on paths you didn't take in life, right? Because you've also got these two kind of, um, you know, childhood sweethearts to an extent who then tried something as young adults that didn't really work out. And now they find themselves as grown adults, completely separate lives, but they have this kind of common experience and common, um, you know, shared past. And basically both of them can't really get away from the idea of, well, what if this had worked? What if this had happened? What if this had happened instead? Uh, would our lives look different? Would they be better? Would they be worse? Um, and I think the... I got a lot out of it, and I connected with that. I'll leave it there, because also we're going to probably talk about it a little bit. But I just wanted to get that in there, because I have seen a lot of people describe this as a romantic film, and I'm not really sure I'm on board with that. Um, that's not to say that there aren't 
themes of romance present here, right? Of course there are, but I would not describe it as a romantic film. It strikes me more as a sort of film that kind of, you know, goes into the this concept that comes up a few times in the film of Inyon, kind of like this, uh, kind of like, you know, people meeting in past lives, and once they reach a certain level of it, then they can uh, be with one another, and that's kind of where the title comes from, past lives, right? Um, to me, it is a lot more about that. I didn't really get a, a, a kind of like straight romantic vibe off it, but I got a lot out of it, and I think those central performances are great. And I think Celine Song's directorial approach actually is really superb, and I'm hoping we'll probably talk about that as the discussion goes on because I think the way that this is shot and the way that she kind of lingers on scenes really, mm. really adds to that kind of sense of longing and pensiveness. I'm just gonna jump in real quick because I, I I do take I disagree I do think it's a very <laughs> romantic film really quickly, um and maybe it's how we define what a romantic film is you know mm. and uh, I mean w- there has been these likens to say that this is very similar to a Greta Gerwig film or a Noah Baumbach film or also a Nora Ephron film and obviously Nora Ephron just screams romance, but I think it's this idea of a modern romantic film and also the concept of what connection is what connect mm. how do you connect with people how do you connect people from your culture your background your previous lives if you will you know how how those things change but how you keep people in your lives and what that means and i i mean obviously i particularly really love this connection around i i don't think it failed i don't think the relationship that they tried in terms of long distance or even when he came to visit uh, you know, they came back together, uh, failed. I think it just shows that it evolves over time and also people evolve over time, but also they're connected to different parts of their lives. Um, I thought it was super romantic. Also, just being someone who lived in New York for 14 years, the romance of that city and just mm-hmm. sort of the way everything was very, very detailed in two very specific places. Uh, I think there's there's a love for um you know for for these locations that are being in the way that they're filmed um yeah. i think this is a masterpiece of a film and i think a lot of people are talking about best film here and there like oppenheimer and something i think this needs to go off as one of the best films of the year for me it's so i think it's exceptional and it's it's beautiful and it's won lots of awards it's been in lots of film festivals and it deserves every bit of it it's really um sensational but i do think there's there's romance and there's more there's more it's it's interesting it's interesting though that you you, you say that because i because i don't i i i mean and that's why i said there's still romantic themes right i'm not going to say it's like completely lacking in it but it's more <laughs> it's interesting because everything you said about kind of like what you got from it, i 100 percent agree right that's that's stuff i picked up but it's just i think it's interesting that the the way the script has been put together and the way those performances bounce off of one another, there's a lot of depth there, right? Because I don't disagree with anything you've said there, but I've come out of it obviously with a you know a slightly different feeling about what it's about. But I think that kind of speaks to the strength of the film more than anything else, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, I mean, I I can understand why you would say it's not a romantic. I mean, yeah. So as you say, Amanda, it's in the traditional sense. I think if you if you go in not knowing anything about it, then you're going to be in for a, a big surprise. Uh, but it does deal with everything that is adjacent to romance, so everything surrounding yeah, yeah that's, that, that's life. Fair. That's fair. Yeah, <laughs> Every, yes, yeah. So everything that, that that contributes to the making of ro- making or breaking of romance, i.e., uh, who you are, uh, where you are, your dreams, your your fears, uh, the, the sense of longing and isolation and loneliness, which is incumbent with those periods where you're not experiencing romance um, or in the form which you would perhaps like to. Um, so in that sense, but that, 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 as you say, Jim, just makes it all the more interesting and richer film. So it doesn't, it's not a, a criticism per se. I think, I, I think it's brilliant. I, it's one of those, it's one of those films that um, the more you reflect upon it, the more it gives you, uh, and the more that you see in it and the more that it sort of, it occupies a deeper space in your psyche and memory, <laughs> which, um, pretty deep statement, but I mean, it is just one of those films. It's, uh, it gets to the root of a lot of very human problems and a lot of human feelings in a really brilliant way <laughs> very very excellent way i have, I have four pages of notes about this so just <laughs> on. it's a very human film and it's a very yeah. generous film so it embodies that kind of humanness of romantic connection and non-romantic connection and being somewhere and memory and moving somewhere and and changing and and life changing and not being the same person you were when you were, you know, 12 years old. Um, I, I loved it. 
I, I really loved it. It's a it's a such a beautiful film, and uh, yeah, to to pick up on your point, Amanda, about the sense of time and the sense of place, it, it feels so specific and it feels so deeply and delicately enmeshed in those times and places. Um, you know, it it's the details about New York, it's the details about Seoul, but it's also the details about the time periods as well. You know, yeah. I was noticing how authentic the computers looked to right. 12 years ago which is quite a subtle right. change in kind yeah. of operating systems and stuff mm. but the fact that they had that level of detail that level of quality of looking at this kind of thing was was really beautiful and really delicate and, and made it feel real made it feel like a memory that I've never had it's very dreamlike it's very dreamlike yeah. The way it slides between different perspectives and time uh, times, and also just the, the sense of interconnected thoughts and feelings across time and space is handled very well. <laughs> Considering that you're you're you know you're working with like a twenty five year old time scale, mm. I think um, I think Rafa Sales Ross, um, who's a reviewer that writes for Little White Lies, occasionally described it really well when he said um, it's a film about how chance is a kinder helping hand than destiny. Um, which I think is a really modern take on romance um, and a much more, uh, yeah, a kinder, <laughs> a kinder take on romance. It says that, you know, that there is a chance is no less brilliant or important to love than this abstract, perhaps uh, untrue sense of destiny or fate. <laughs> and there was there was plenty about that central issue at the rank. Truth, I mean, like it's something that I got out of it. I, like, I don't want to give everybody my bloody life story here, but like <laughs> my my now wife, right? Me and her, we we started our like we met in uh, Cambridge when we both lived there. She moved back to New York, and we actually started our relationship long distance while she was in New York. So the the scene where he um the scene where he confesses to her uh, this is in the film, the scene where um he soon confesses confesses or that he misses her over Skype. That's essentially mm. the, like like that essentially is kind of like how our relationship started right yeah. so and now obviously in in our case um you know that with the aforementioned 18 month old that's had a slightly more kind of like you know enduring <laughs> legacy than the one in the film did mm. but this idea of kind of like this idea kind of like filling up with emotions about paths that you're not taking or you could have taken and ruminating on them and like how much should you ruminate on them and and all the rest of it 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 really struck a chord with me and i think it captures that in a really accurate involving and relatable way now obviously there's a lot of things to do with um the particular experience depicted here in terms of kind of like, you know, the mean childhood friends and her emigrating. And then, you know, say, like there's also that kind of like sense of connection to her homeland. And that's sort of like, there's all these different strands going on. But as we've already said, I think there's so many things going on here. And it, to me, is that well written. Right, and it has the it has all these beautiful turns of of phrase in it, and I, I think if you were being nitpicky, you could say, "Oh, well, maybe some people don't talk like that." Well, you know what? I don't care, right? Because yeah. <laughs> because it's captured this, it's captured this these feelings and these experiences really pretty beautifully, I think. Um, and something that we haven't mentioned so far, I think, is also the way it's the way it's shot, right, and the way that Celine Song captures a lot of scenes. I think adds to this because like there's a tendency for like especially early on, there's a tendency for the cameras can like linger on details and drift across a scene and it kind of gives you a real kind of picture of that moment um in the life of the character right mm -hmm. um and i think that's a particularly important thing to do particularly when it has this kind of structure where we're going you know we go through these different um periods of time in their in their lives another thing that i appreciated about it was um I actually find the character, and I have seen a couple of people have a problem with it, actually, um, but the characterization of Arthur, right, so Nora's wife, um, uh, sorry, Nora's husband, um, <laughs> and once we, we, in the latest timeline, his characterization is, uh, like, his, his approach to this kind of, from his perspective, to a certain extent, intrusion in their lives of this, um, you know, childhood sweetheart, who I think he knows... Um, you know, wants to connect with uh, Nora on some level again. 
um it's framed as like maybe a bit passive and meek but i actually find it really quite genuine and honest right Same. because i, I, I think really there's, yeah i really yeah, like that relationship i love that yeah, exactly no, it showed yeah. a it showed a trust and a depth of understanding of his partner's experience exactly um you know which i thought you know because it would be very easy to try and ramp up drama in the film and conflict and have you know have things that the characters need to overcome and resolve by injecting kind of like turbulence into that relationship but it doesn't do that because that's not the focus of the film right and i think the way that that relationship plays out actually felt a lot more genuine to me right because there's trust and understanding there and i think the film shows that like the nora character needs space to process those feelings and i think the final scene i'm not going to go into detail about what the final scene covers but i think the final scene really shows that beautifully and i think it was a really quite excellent way to to end the film um i got a lot out of this and i i again i think those performances are great but i think the the way it's shot also adds to that i think the film's main strength though is probably the script right there's a lot of ideas captured there. there's a lot of um aspects that you can relate to in there and learn about even in there and i think it's it's got a lot going for it and i think a lot of it is probably hitting the page but a lot of the other things have come together to really make sure that the ideas in that script are put forward in the best possible way. I, I yeah, I, I agree. I, I love the script. Um, I, I, something which I, I see, which I think is really emblematic of the film as a as a really um, distinct modern romantic film, is the scene um, where the two finally meet in person for the first time again um, since their their childhood, and he just says. What do I say? <laughs> what, yeah. what, what what do I do? And it just uh, it captures the reality of the awkwardness of that situation, and um, this this fear of the, this failure to live up to the romantic ideal and the fantasy and to deliver like the iconic romantic line. Yeah. And that is the reality that those those moments don't happen uh, on demand at the at the moment, which you would love to summon them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> as much as you'd like to, yeah. And uh, I think the, the exchanges between uh, between the husband. And Nora are are just are so brilliant. It's, it's such a low conflict film. <laughs> there are no assholes or villains uh, yet. I mean, well, I mean, you, there 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 are certain conflicts, but not conflicts in the sense of you know gratuitous uh, dramas and competition and art. Thing. Amanda's making a face. Well, I was just going to say, I think it's. I think I, I appreciate that the husband is reasonable and understanding, but I felt a great deal of like awkwardness and uncomfortability in for him, and you know, yeah. in that oh, situation. Yeah, for sure. While he was a generous person, and I think someone, I think it was Simon, you said is a generous filmer. So it's there are quite That's aspects it. that there aren't that these aren't bad characters, and there aren't you know massive conflicts. There's they're having this really intense conversation about relationship and love and like past lives in God. front of him in a different language, and that's awkward and very <laughs> like super state like it's it's quite awkward and if i was that person i would be like what the heck is going on i, 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 I agree but i think the, the thing i think the film captures that beautifully right because mm. there's then a conversation between the two men after that right yeah. and i and i think it so i think it, it that that's the thing i think it captures that it's, it's really the, well though it's the nuance of that and there's certain yeah. aspects there's like one I, you know i can't relate to every part of this story but I can relate to as you said Jim which I think is funny because you're the one who said it wasn't romantic and you had that situation <laughs> yeah I know, no it's true uh, I do, I do and, realize now that I see it yeah and, oh. I, and you know I've had long distance relationships as well that relate that you have to use media certain mm. certain media and I think for one that expresses that kind of relationship how you know very very well the other thing is it expresses what new york and 12 years of new york does to you or who you are in that sort yeah. of way and also just the complications like it's the east village which is was my neighborhood and the like like just the the luggage even though i was kind of the one thing i was like at the end he's carrying the luggage in the middle of the night and then he's in the morning. I, I don't know. Like the, there was some time issues with like how he got to the airport and why he needed it. But there was these things. <laughs> like, I think he was, had an early flight. I think that yeah. was very, very early. Very like, early like, and they were like saying <laughs> goodbye at like 4.30 a.m. or something like that. But anyway, the, other than that, I think all of those awkward things is what makes this a modern romance, is what makes it nuanced, is what makes it special and what makes it precious. 
And I'm sure, and very similarly, we're talking a lot about the New York part, but there's also the Seoul part. And there, you know, there's there's this part of place and and being Korean that is like part of her life, which the you know the main character brings up that I think yeah. is just really, really special. And it I, I have seen the film criticized for this kind of overt lack of conflict that we've been discussing, but I, I don't see that as a problem for um... it. I, I don't. I don't yeah. I think it's a it's like as as I've said, a generous film and a mature film where there is huge emotional conflict, but it's not on the surface. It's all yeah. internal mm. and it is all played through. Yeah, no, and you've hit the nail the, on the head mm. there. It, it's conflict, conflict. It, it's conflict almost internally within each character, right? Yeah. And the and the way that the characters are relating to one another, sure, it's spurring that on, but it's not conflict it's not really conflict with like in opposition to other characters and i think because it's because it's ostensibly and probably pitched as a relationship drama i think that's to me that's maybe more a case of misaligned expectations but i mean mm, the the, yeah. the thing is right if you think about kind of you know the way relationship dramas or the way relationships play out in real life like a lot of the time they don't play out like dramatic films they no, don't, don't right they're, fu they're full of people you don't have to you know for yeah, they're full of awkward moments mm. and it's, it's you know they're full of awkward moments and things you wish you'd said or had yeah. wish you hadn't said like it, that that's how these things play out right and i think the film does an amazing job of like getting that across and i think what i what stays with you about this film and i think this speaks to um, its strengths and what is what he's trying to get across. I think overall it leaves you with a feeling, right? It kind of leaves you with a feeling and a vibe. It doesn't really leave you with, um, you know, thinking about specific things. It's just whether it connects with you on an emotional level. And for me, it did, and it certainly sounds like it did uh, with everybody here. But I think what's fascinating about it and speaks to the strength of the film is I think we've all connected to it with through a slightly different through line, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that really does speak to kind of like the layers that this film has in terms of the emotions it's delivering. It's a it's a reasonably straightforward story, but I think the way that it's written and the way that it, those performances deliver it um, gives you it gives a lot of people different things to kind of like capture onto and come away with a feeling from the film. Yeah, an absolutely astonishing directorial debut. Like like for her first film, it's it's incredibly confident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's another person that if Celine Song does not get a nomination for best film, I'm going to be mad. It's a couple of them, <laughs> I've already said. Uh, but really, yeah, really beautiful. Really beautiful film. I mean, I could go off on a few, a few things, as I say, on that film. Like, yeah, I just, I, I would, I would talk more about the, the way that it, the rarity of, and of cap, of successfully capturing romantic relationships that are conducted virtually. Um, yeah. Yeah, apart from, so you've got yeah. like, you, you've got mail or like, you know, the, the Kelly Rowland music video where she gets broken up with over an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> it's pretty much like, <laughs> perhaps her. Yeah, the, I, it was a little, uh, for me, it was, you know, because I've had a long distance relationship uh, in the past and that little Skype chime, the little Skype yes, chime. I said, I wrote that, that time, down as well. It was like a, I wrote that a, a, like as well. a Proustian, you know, mad. I said it was a Pav I off. said it was a Pavlovian response, like yes. just because they they always like turn around and then you know it's you, yeah, you, you end up getting that kind of romantic feeling from this horrible automated jingle sound because you're having it, it, it's also quite funny how it kind of like I think it like it lines up with my age actually and the age of the characters quite mm. well. So even those kind of like moments where like the internet connection's not really quite good yeah, enough exactly. for you to have a flowing conversation. <laughs> yep. Like, you yep. know, it, it like it does. It captures Captures, it captures feelings and emotions well. It does have the occasional kind of like, um, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Clara. It's a good point, actually, that, like capturing a relationship that goes virtually. It does that very well, right? Which is difficult to do. It is difficult yeah. to do. And reflects the current ubiquitousness and the necessity of it. I mean, we all conduct to a degree our modern romantic relationships via like WhatsApp, phone call, course, yeah. text, whatever, even if you're not in a long distance relationship. Mm. So I, I just find it so poignant and uh uh, re relatable that uh, when they're uh, they're apart from each other and they're recommending each other movies and then watching them alone uh, just to feel close to somebody yeah. uh, staying up all hours and grinning foolishly maniacally uh, at a screen alone in public and laughing <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just it's yeah it's brilliant I just I think it's brilliant and we've we've only sort of briefly touched on the fact that this is largely an immigration story <laughs> and it is is what about what it is to be a sort of become a, a sort of third culture person where you feel like you're neither 
in the culture that you came from anymore and neither and not fully in um the culture where you find yourself mm -hmm. and i just i just find that that it captures so perfectly um she was at nora saying a point like oh it's so korean he's so korean <laughs> and criticizing her own uh her um ability to speak korean and um and then and then even her saying that's just something koreans say when she's referring to to Inja, the indian sorry uh, the concept of this these um connected lovers lovers connected through fate over over spans of various lifetimes mm. um i just love that that she she wants to be cynical she wants to be immune and she wants to, uh, and she ends up being as you say amanda a, a new yorker <laughs> like a yeah. realist a cynic uh that she doesn't want to admit that she could be taken in by this like romantic hokum, which is so relatable. And I, and not that I believe that it is hokum, but you know, that is the cynic's view. No, but um, there was a distinctly New York after 12 years, what happens to you that was very clear. That relationship between her husband and herself were, were very, was very, very New York, like the everything yeah. about that. And the ability to analyze that and sort of still hold on to your identity because that's the, you know, that's an important thing about being an individual and being a creative and actually kind of to the fore of your New Yorkness, if you will. So she became a New Yorker, but then grappled with her past and her past connections. And that's, it, that felt very distinctly New York, which is what I said, it was very relatable to me. So funny, like there, when uh, Nora's having a, uh, the conversation with their husband about whether this interloper will in fact, it does mean trouble for their for their marriage, and um and then Nora asks her husband, "Are you asking me if you were the answer to my parents' immigrant immigrant dream?" Yeah, <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's so smart, it's so self reflective, it's, brilliant. It's, it's, so, it's it's really good. Yeah, it, it's just really good writing. Would watch again. Yeah. Yes, we'll watch again. Sure. We'll watch we'll, again, no doubt. Very soon, probably. We'll watch again, and we'll um, debate whether or not it's a romantic uh, film. <laughs> I th I think I'm willing to the, the, listen. I, I I'm going to stand <laughs> by that it's not kind of like a stereotypically romantic yeah. film. I I will roll back. I will roll back. On saying <laughs> it's not. I think it's more. It, it's more just. I have seen some some like, kind of like oh well, you know I was expecting you know people say it's a mm. romantic film. I didn't really get that. But it's like I don't th you know that's it's not aiming to be in my view, a romantic film as much as it's a film about many things, one of the overarching things being romance, right? And I realise that sounds like a very wanky, <laughs> nitpicky way to put it, but I do think I do think the way I put it, kind of like, I'll stand by that. But yes, I will uh, yeah, go back a little I, bit I think my, I agree. my opening statements. Yeah, sure. I think it's a human film. It's a film about human connections, some of which are romantic. Exactly, precisely. No, I agree. Yeah, Simon has put that a lot more concisely than I did, yes. <laughs> Either way, it's a great film. It's a unanimous decision. You, we will see it again. We do hope it does. Yeah, it, people continue to watch it, and you should as well um, at a cinema near you. Mm -hmm.